Hello everyone, Ember here, hope you're all having a nice day, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Starbirth. So Starbirth is a small Japanese set of 100 cards, roughly, that's going to compromise part of our Brilliant Star set, which is our next English set coming out in February. So, well, more specifically, the end of February. So, um, yeah, quite a long time before we see these cards in English properly, but still worth looking at and sort of contemplating and seeing what's going to be good, what's going to be prevalent in the meta, what could possibly change the game. And thankfully, there's actually a lot of really interesting cards in this mini set. Usually in these sort of smaller sets, there's not too much to talk about. But this one especially, there does seem to be a lot of game-changing cards, which I'm definitely happy to report. I'm definitely excited for a lot of these. So just some context very quickly. Um, I will have timestamps in the comment section as usual. But just with, with just words... Just for some context, um, I'm primarily a rogue and a budget player, so I'm more likely to see things from a not-so-competitive standpoint and more of a wishful thinker. So feel free to criticize that in the comment section or whatever, I don't really care. But either way, I will try and look for the competitive standing of a lot of these cards, but I will also try and keep things pretty lighthearted in a way and try not to judge things too harshly and look for the best ways to play a lot of the more obscure cards, maybe. So without further ado, we have an Execute, which has got lovely artwork, of course, but um, just nothing really too special about Execute, nothing uh, nothing much an improvement. 50 HP, pretty weak nowadays. Executor, 140 HP, retreat cost of 3. It's meh, and its attacks are far from ideal. We do not want to be doing this, low kind, this kind of low damage, and we just have better attackers overall in the grass department i.e. Tabu Bulu or Reggie Drago. Shroomish, again, got some nice artwork going on. You will see me commenting a lot on the artwork. It's definitely something I like to look out for. But Shroomish, pretty bad. Breloom, Illusion Spore, 30 damage. Bones active Pokemon is now asleep. It's pretty terrible. Dust Upper Cut is 130, which can be modified to be to getting 2 at KOs, as we'll see later on with the tool card. But you can't use the attack unless Breloom used Illusion Spore during the last turn. These kind of attacks are just really bad because obviously your opponent can just switch out of the, the sleep. There's no guarantee you'll do 30 last turn and then do another 130. Your opponent can just wake up, evolve, knock out Breloom, all the rest of it. So just a pretty bad card overall. Trapias with a Healing Shade. Each of your Pokemon has any Grass energy attached to it. Can't be affected by Confusion. Cannot see a world where this is very good. I feel like this ability should have been something like when you attach a grass energy to Trapias, search your deck for a grass Pokemon or something, at least make it a little bit more interesting than special conditions related, because usually special conditions in the card game, unless they're for a lot of poison damage, they aren't usually particularly very good. Then we have Turtwig, who 8 HP, just narrowly getting into level ball distance, and quite nice actually having 8 HP, it's pretty tanky. Grutal on the other end of the spectrum, just out of level ball reach. But does have the ability Sun Drench Cell Shell, which says once during your turn, you may search your deck for a grass Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So we've seen this ability before on a Grovile, for those of you who were playing in the early Sun and Moon era. It was pretty good back then, although admittedly, it was a very kind of niche ability, and it was around when Forester Giant Punts, I believe, was still a card. So this is meh. You know, we have Turfield, but that's a stadium, I guess. You could argue maybe there's some merit in something like Decidueye, or maybe even in its own Torterra deck, as we'll see with its Everpress attack, but or maybe even in the Warmer Dam deck, as I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, it's a cool card, nonetheless. It's better than most Stage 1 Pokemons usually are. The attack is obviously dreadful, but the ability is... It's nothing terrible, really. It's, it's a pretty good ability. Torterra, 190 HP, so really on the bulk end, which is what we want to be seeing with these Stage 2s. Has two attacks, one of them is not very good, but Everpress does 50 damage for each of your evolution Pokemon in play. We have seen this before on a Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen, also an ability, lets you search your deck for Pokemon, so methinks that that card kind of inspired these two a bit. But either way, Everpress is going to be, it's just depending, that kind of damage output is going to depend on how consistently you can get your evolutions out to play. Maybe you play this with like Inteleon, as long as Inteleons will be in format for at least four or five months, I think, roughly after this comes out, so there will be enough time to play it with Inteleon. So you could do that with the sort of 50 damage mods on the Drizzle, you know, it'll stack up eventually, and you'll be reaching 2 hit KOs, no problem. 
is it worth it to do that? I mean, you need two energy. That's my biggest concern. If this was maybe, I mean, maybe a grass energy, a single grass energy would just be too powerful. But even then, I would say if it was just a single energy, I think this would be a really good attack on a stage two. But because it's for two energy, that's where my concern is. But moving on a bit, we have Burmy. Very cute that they have all three Burmies in the artwork. It's just lovely artwork all together. Then we have Wormadam. So Wormadam has a really interesting attack, Madame's Rage, which for two colors, which can be used for either a twin or a double turbo. Mind you, double turbo will reduce your overall damage output by 20. That is worth noting here. It does 30 damage base and then 10 more damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile. So these are, this kind of attack has been around for a very long time in the game. We've not really seen a one like this for a good while, though. I guess the closest thing is Mad Party, probably, or um, a single strike Lycanroc, which wasn't very good. But this is just any Pokemon. Admittedly, back in the day when Vespaquen or Flareon was pretty good, they had cards like Unknown Hand. But it is worth noting in the set, we will be getting Ultra Ball, so there's plenty of ways in the format to discard Pokemon. I obviously mentioned the Torterra earlier, so you could, like... Maybe you play this with this Torterra, or maybe this Gortal, or at least the Gortal, to search out the warmer downs. And that's kind of like your consistent way of finding them. The energy is a little bit annoying, but there's honestly enough ways to get Pokemon to disco pile. You just just consider that you need seven to do a hundred, and like a hundred damage isn't what it was a couple of years ago. So you do, you do need quite a lot of Pokemon in there. But I think this could be good. I think this is actually like a pretty solid attack, especially for a one prezzer. Then we have Mothim. Oh yeah, it's also worth noting that Wormadan, this attack is on a Wormadan fighting type, grass type, and metal type. So you will be able to hit stuff like Gengar and Umbreon for weakness, which is pretty important as well to note. But um, anyway, moving on to Mothim. Mothim has a fairly uninspiring stats compared to Wormadam. It does have free retreat, which is nice, but has raid. It does 30 damage, and if evolved up, it does 120. It's just not very good. You could say it's like chip damage and maybe you play it as a one-off, but I don't think it's very good. It's also worth noting that um, Wormadam might fit quite nicely in the Zorak box, where you use Zorak to your Zorak's ability from Along Skies to discard Zorak and Zora, which not only fuels his attack damage, but also ensures you have a consistent supply of Wormadams, as well as you could you could like choose the Wormadam that suits the matchup. So for example, if you discarded the Fighting One or the Grass One, and you just need the fighting one all game. As long as you have Zorox in play, you can just discard them and choose the fighting one over and over again. Admittedly, that does require you to have constant Zorox, so you're kind of counter. That's kind of counterproductive if you're trying to build up more damage. But either way, it's probably worth something experimenting. And of course, there's other twin energy attackers like Glissapod. And maybe I'm thinking too far into this, but it seems pretty cool either way. But uh, Mothim, not too great. Shaman V or Shaman V-Star. So Shaman V has the attack revenge bar 60, and then 40 more for each prize card your opponent's taken. Decks like Moltres, where you can run Aurora Energy and Energy Switch, I think this is pretty good. Regular grass decks, maybe not so much, just because it's a little bit awkward. Then Shaman V-Star. Revenge Burst does a lot more admirable damage. I'm a, a big fan of this attack. I think it can do it here relatively easy. And your ability kind of fits in with your whole strategy, which will be to kind of tank and heal disrupt in the early game with hammers healing potions and stuff and then come in with revenge burst in the late game after one or two shamans go down i think it could be an interesting deck to try and play around with and maybe a bit like um a salasaur from back in the day although i don't think this would be as good as salasaur just because salasaur had better tanking capabilities this does not so i got 250 hp but still it could be could be interesting nothing really going on with charizard v is to be expected Charizard V-Star is a lot more interesting. Explosive Fire doing 130, and then if it has any damage counters on it, it does 100 more. There is a Stadium card that lets you attach a Fire Energy from the Disco Pile to one of your Fire-type Pokemon and place two damage counters on that card. So Explosive Fire will always be doing 230. That admittedly does lower your HP down a little bit, but it's probably a worthy sacrifice just to do flat 260. I think that's really good. With something like the... Uh, choice belt, as we'll also see later on, lets you do additional 30 damage to Pokemon V, means Explosive Fire is actually doing 290, which I don't know why not more people are talking about this, but that's essentially, this is a one at Kiro on all the other V stars, and then V Star Blade is doing 320 is insane, you know, with a, um, I keep forgetting the name, choice belt, 
a plus 3d damage that's doing 350 so it's just a one to kill on anything in the game i think this card is actually really good i'm not sure if it will be too clunky in practice the three energy is going to be a thorn no matter what without welder but i do think it's definitely not worth sleeping on and people should be maybe paying more attention to this guy either way though moving on magmar has some of the best artwork i've seen in recent sets like if you don't like this artwork i'm seriously questioning your taste it's insane great artwork Shang my mortar cannot really live up to the damage it is cool they kind of brought back the whole tag team aspect of these two guys bolt projection projection does 120 and if elect drive is on your bench it is 120 more so 240 it's okay but how are you getting three energy on there how are you getting the elect drive on the bench like consistently and stuff you know it's could be get a little bit awkward there either way it could be like a fun deck and expand it with welder you know easy stuff to play for a beginner Moltres is pretty good from what I remember from the reveal. So it does 20 damage, and then if this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, it does 70 more. So 90 can seem a little bit underwhelming, and you have to have damage on it. Well, it's very fragile, but then we have Magma Basin. So I think this could fit very well into a Charizard deck where 90 plus 260, and then of course you have the, the choice belt, keep coming back to that card. And then even just Zigzagoon definitely helps with your maths a lot. So I think this will fit perfectly in that kind of deck. Also is a nice little tempo attacker with other stuff like Entei V, which we know is coming in start to deck 100. So I think this Moltres is actually pretty good. Maybe not as good as the Zapdos was because the Zapdos from back in the day that had a similar kind of attack that had, you know, Electro Powers and stuff. This only has Choice Belt, but I still think it's a, a pretty good card. Chimchar with the famous Ember attack. Love to see it, but um, not, nothing too great. Monferno, again, pretty bland, stage 1. Infernape has two attacks. One worth noting does 160, which is... It's not awful, actually. Like, 160 is not just not a bad number to hit. But Fire Vortex is is for the Typhlosion fans from Breakthrough. If any of you guys are out there, reveal the top 5 cards of your deck. It does 80 damage for each energy card to discard revealed in this way. Then discard the energy and shuffle everything else back in. So on the one hand, you are discarding your way of doing damage on the other hand you are saving more infernape and rare candies is this too unreliable should this have been on a stage one i think maybe this is too much even for one energy the most appealing thing about this card to me is the fact that it's for a single energy it's none of this two energy like the um totara was but i do think this is a it's a pretty fun attack to mess around with basically it's, it's obviously not going to be competitive but it could be a fun meme to try out Lapras is not doing much. Does Frost Rampage. Two water, one colors, one ten. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out, um, your Prawn's active is now paralyzed. It's really nothing that good. There's just better secondary attackers to play in water box decks. Um, I mean, I'd rather play two Basculin over a single copy of this guy, so it doesn't seem to be too great. It's unfortunate. Corefish, obviously not going to be doing anything. Crawdunt. Crab Impact, 150, discard 2 energy. Yes, we have Choice Belt allowing you to do 180. That's a 1 at kill on Crobat. And you're getting 1 at kill anyway, so discarding 2 energy isn't such a big deal. But either then, like, why are you trying to get a stage 1 and Frost Moth and 3 energy and a Choice Belt? Seems like an awful lot of work just to 2 at kill VMAX. Although, that's the thing, isn't it? You're 2 at killing VMAX. Could, be, could it be good? Maybe, maybe not. Weakness to Lightning is a big turnoff for me, especially the 130 HP, which means Dragapult Jolteon automatically just wiping the floor with you. Yeah, I'm not sure about this guy. It's a bit of a shame, though, because I don't think we've had a single good Crawdont ever. But hey-ho, hey, hey -ho, maybe this one breaks the trend. Piplup is not doing much, but a cute Arok, as, as always. Prenplup is also doing absolutely nothing. That's got to be one of the most boring Stage 1s I've ever seen. Empoleon. Empoleon is pretty cool. I think Empoleon is one of those, it's a good card, it's just not a very good stage 2 Pokemon. So it has the ability Emergency Ascent that lets you attach from the discard pile if you have no cards in your hand onto your bench, and then lets you draw 3 cards. Really strong ability, especially in Expanded, where you have a million ways of discarding your hand and then using Battle Compressor and all the rest of it. In Standard, maybe, maybe a bit more limited, but still pretty cool. Has 160 HP, so... If your opponent wants to boss this up and deal with it, then it's not really the most, you know, it's not the easiest to take down. 
I do kind of respect that they gave it enough HP to be able to tank a hit at least. The water arrow attack is also fine. It's nothing great, but it's six damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Maybe there's actually a world where you play this in a very aggressive kind of archetype that just kind of can do the whole emergency ascent ability going second or something, and then you murder a Sobble going second. I'm not sure if that's ever going to be good. And then from there you like poke something else for 60 after you've KO'd a Sobble. Like I don't I don't know if it would ever be that good, but like it could be something. Like obviously there's um Torterra synergy as well, I forget to mention that. So you could like put a bunch of these on the bench, draw some cards, and then Torterra for loads of damage or whatever. I don't know. It could be pretty interesting though. Boizel is got a nasty stall attack. I hate those attacks. And that's actually doing damage. Ugh, I don't like that. I don't like those attacks. They're really annoying to deal with. Float Soul does Floatify. Put two item cards and just got power into your hand. Definitely a lot of buzz around this card because it's obviously similar to Sableye, which I think eventually got banned and expanded. If not, it was Puzzle of Time. I get them mixed up. But either way, putting two item cards will always be good for control decks. I don't think control is automatically busted with this card. I think it'll take a lot more for control to actually come back into relevancy just because there's too many spread decks, there's too many decks that can basically just want to kill you for very little effort. And I don't think as long as um, I think as long as those cards exist, I should say, then control will always struggle. But Flotify, interesting ability getting back battle pads, crushing hammers, you could have like loops of some sorts, and it's definitely an interesting card to play around with. Lumonian V says, when you place Pokemon for your hand, you bench. You may search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. This is Tapu Lele Reborn. Is it going to be good? Question mark. Tapu Lele was a two of in most decks when it came out. It was easily one of the best cards in the format. Will this have the same kind of impact? Honestly, if you're not playing Inteleon, I recommend you play Lumion V. I honestly think this card may be better than Crobat in some regards. It's that good. It's especially good for decks like Melanie, who, you know, automatically want to find that supporter card that they definitely need, or Raihan, even. But, um, no, I, I do think this card is really good. I don't think it's maybe as broken as Lele was in its own format, just because Lele for Bridget was so busted going second back then, and there's obviously no Bridget right now. But the fact that it's still search your deck for a supporter card, I think this will be I still think this will be really good. I don't think it'll be as broken as Lele, but not as bad as some people are saying it's going to be. So, a bit of a mixed feeling on Lumion and V, but I think it'll be really good. Manaphy, probably a one-off for all single prize decks moving forward. Prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon. Seen it a million times before. Every time spread decks get popular, this will pop up. It's also within lovable search, so great to see that. It's also 70 HP. It's a little bit more awkward to deal with, with stuff like quick shooting in Talion and whatnot, so happy about that. Kupachu is not doing anything, nor is Baratek. Just Baratek with the sheer cold shoulder is what I read that as, but uh, yeah. During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't attack. I mean, that's it's interesting. I'm never sure why that would ever be terribly great, though, because the opponent could just switch out. It's a shame, because the I love the kind of like almost glass paint artwork of Baratek. It's really cool. Moving on to Raichu V, which is admittedly a fair bit more interesting. With a fast charge, if you go first, you can use attack on your first turn. Search your deck for a lightning energy and attach it to his Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. Good attack if you're going second. Honestly, these attacks are fairly underrated, despite what people say, because more often than not, your opponent will not be able to do what they will want to do in a lot of games. So I don't think this is an awful attack. Maybe against something as aggressive as Mew, you won't get away with it. But certainly against some decks, I think you'll be fine. Dynamic Spark, 60 damage. You may discard any amount of light energy from your Pokemon in play. It's not just Raichu, which is really important. It means you can discard them from the bench, and you do 60 damage for each one. So, pair this up with Flaffy, and you've got yourself a pretty good engine. I don't think that that's ever terrible. Maybe it's not a an A tier, even B tier, C tier deck, but it's... Probably not bad. Probably not a bad rogue deck. It's got rogue deck written all over it. It's not quite budget trash, but it's not quite top tier good. 60 damage, good multiplier. Means if you're discarding three, it's always a two at KO. But it does also mean that you'll need like six. <laughs> you'll need six energy if you want to get a one at KO, which is pretty brutal. Four, if you just want to KO Zacian, 
five for any V star, and then six for any V max. That's some helpful maps if you're wondering. So, yeah, maybe there's something here to be had with Flaffy. I've seen some people say this card's garbage. Other people say it's really good. It's better Rayquaza or the rest of it. I'm not sure yet. Getting one at Kill by Urshifu is also not very desirable, but I guess you just take the L. Could be interesting, though. Electrobuzz. Um, nothing going on with Electrobuzz. Electrive says 30 damage, and if you have any Benchmark Mortar with any damage counters on them, so I guess you've got the Magma Basin Stadium. I probably should have brought that up when I was talking about Magma Mortar. This attack does 90 more damage, so there's clearly a kind of deck they were, they were trying to build with this, where you have Magma Mortar, maybe even the Moltres as well, and the Magma Basin and Electrive, and you've got to work out your draw engine beyond that, but either way, it's 120. Is it that good? I'm trying to see a world where 120 is actually ever good. Even with buffs like the, the Troy spell allowing you to do 150, that's still not amazing. Sure, it's 2 a curing V-Star, which is going to be the future of the game. So, I mean, maybe it's not that bad, actually. Maybe I'm underselling these 120 moves because the thing about Troy spell is everything is plus 30 now. Like, you have to view these one prizes as being able to do 30 more. So, 150 sounds pretty bad until you realize, oh, 150 is... 300 that's two kills on v stars which are the future of the game which is important to remember so maybe this card ain't that bad just saying maybe it is bad though i'm not sure high voltage current is a really interesting attack but unfortunately will be terrible it does 50 damage to each your opponent's pokemon initially i would have said hey this is worth trying out with raichu and then if well not well not raichu but um the flaffy i mean you could pair it with the raichu it does 50 but um no i meant like the the Flaffy that does the Dynamotor ability could be cool. And then, of course, Manaphy just comes and says, no you. So for every one prize deck that's saved by Manaphy, unfortunately, Electrive has to take the L. Bit of a shame, but the Feast of Force attack maybe is something. Just maybe something with my Mortar. Could be fun. Shanks is doing Nout, but does have free retreat. 40 HP is a bit brutal. Um, even 50, but 40 like ouch that's yeah that's painful definitely would rather play um shinx has more hp the only way i see you would play this is if you're playing the snorlax now this is the one instance where i'd say the shinx is better because it allows you to free retreat into snorlax luxio is pretty bad because we have the rebel clash luxio that just lets you put into play immediately from the top of your deck if you draw it for turn luxray unfortunately we don't really have ways of getting stage two pokemon out to play it is worth noting actually there is an orbital that lets you search your deck for a stage two pokemon put into play so maybe you would play a one-off luxray because it covers a lightning type weakness and for a single aurora or basic lightning you can do 50 for each energy attached to all your points pokemon so for example if mew has four energy or single strike has four or five you know you're doing respectable damage for a single energy cost so i don't think that's it's actually a bad card Maybe in its own deck, it's pretty terrible. But honestly, in like that kind of Orbital style deck, if anyone still plays that, then this is probably a good attacker in there. Patrisu, fun card. Probably not very good, though. Went Wind Up Thunder. Does 30 damage for each Pokemon to a card. We have Choice Belt. <laughs> Obviously going to mention that one first, allowing you to do additional 60. Um, we have Air Balloon, EXP share, because you'll need to pay that energy cost somehow. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things, but the energy cost is brutal. If this was for one energy, I'd be saying, yeah, this card's amazing. But for two energy, it just makes all the difference, unfortunately. It means you have to run XP shares, for XP share, basically, on all your Patrisu, or some way of consistently getting Raihan every turn. It could be funny. There's also a 100 Crow, by the way, that lets you have four tool cards attached to it, if I haven't mentioned that already. Um, yeah, could be could be funny. I do kind of prefer the idea of Honchkrow with Whimsicott, though. I'll probably mention that hopefully when I come to Honchkrow, but again, it's a fun card. Fun, cute little meme deck, but nothing more than that, I don't think. Clefairy, lovely artwork, terrible card. Clefable, interesting first attack, allowing you to flip three coins and free chads, search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon. If there was, like, multiple stage 1s and stage 2s that were control-based, then maybe this has a home like in some kind of weird control deck that really wants you to have stage ones in play, but doesn't want them in the active immediately, if that makes any sense. So maybe stuff like the Dust Snore that controls energy, and the Seeking that rips off energy, the Persian that controls the hand, you know, maybe there's 
maybe there's a feature there, but flipping coins is obviously not very good. So probably fun in those. Um, oh, you know those decks that you need to complete to com like complete challenges on the ladder, like those evolve fifteen Pokemon. Like this is probably perfect for the psychic one. Just a silly note, but worth worth mentioning. Baltoy as really cool artwork actually i love what they've done with the kind of the the astrological signs being reflected on the land that's really cool pretty bad card though clay doll is again i kind of like that artwork but coinciding figures is not very good sadly if your opponent have the same number of bench pokemon this attack does 90 more damage it's too situational especially for three energy 180 is a great number to hit i will say that but it's just too situational sadly duskull is cool probably my favorite dust call artwork so far looks like he's on the hunt bit of a almost um plague doctor slash grim reaper reference i think going on there dust clops boasting the best dust clops artwork i've ever seen i really like these ones with the trees there was um an executor one a few sets back that i really liked so that's pretty cool dusk nor however is not very good it has a cool ability special trans it says, often he's like, during a turn, you may move a special energy from one of your Pokemon to another one. It's just not very good. Um, maybe there's a meme deck that wants you to play loads of different special energy, and this is really good, but without, without ways of cheating it out to play, except Orbital, I don't think it's particularly great, which is sad, because there has been a lot of cool Dusknar cards with cool attacks and whatnot, but this isn't, this isn't one of them. Chimaicho is kind of taking that whole... If you're building a beginner deck to teach people how to play, you probably throw in like two copies of Chimaicho because it's just an easy clear flow attack. So your deck for up to two special energy, it's not going to be anything special, but it's kind of easy to partner up with whatnot. Whimsicott cop V, fluffy obstruction, 20 damage, prone defending is a basic can attack. It's not very good unless you're against Sashim, but even then they can just switch out. They always play like four switch, three escape rope. Cotton Guard does 9 damage and then takes 30 less. Really bad. Whimsicott V-Star, a lot more interesting though. So 250 HP, we're on the kind of fragile Whimsical Fluff side. Sort of predicted that already, but either way, it's good to know. Tree Cost of 1 is obviously great. We love to see that. The attack, Psychic Colorless Colors. So there is room for um, double turbo energy. Does 160 and then your opponent can't play any tools or special energy. So the reason, like, there's a lot of things I like about this attack, even though it doesn't seem very overwhelming on the first glance. Obviously, the attack cost is decent with double turbo, but you also have Shadow Rider Calyrex, you have Arceus V-Star. Then you have the 160, 160, doubled, 320, good number to hit. Obviously, with your own choice belt, you'll be able to hit 190. That's a guaranteed 2 kill on all VMAX and V-Stars. Then, shutting down tools, you're obviously shutting down choice belts, EXP shares, air balloons, probably a bigger one. And then special energy is huge. You're shutting down, you know, uh, fusion energy, single strike energy, all seeing a loads of play, speed lightning energy, for example, and you'll be shutting down double turbo energy yourself. So if your opponent's paying like four, four of like turbo energy, a couple of basic energy, you just score their basic energy and then you prevent them from attaching special energy. That's basically GG's. I think this card's pretty good. I don't think it's maybe overwhelmingly busted. But um, just thinking about these kind of effects that have been around in the past, just thinking back to um, Giratina EX, I think it was, that had a similar kind of attack that shut down special energy. I think that also shut down stadiums as well. But this one, tool special energy disruption, always pretty good in some form. And then Cotton Ball V-Star Power, not that good, but 60 damage, 20 opponents of Pokemon for each energy attached to this Pokemon. So I guess if you have three energy on there, you could just knock out a Crobat whenever you want, or a Luminion V. It's not terrible, actually. I don't hate that attack. At, yeah, I don't hate that attack. I think it's it's actually a lot better than I thought it was. I thought it was um, it had to be to one of your opponents benched or something, but 60 for, energy attached, for each energy attached to you is also is all, it's actually pretty nice because it means you can either have 3 energy and threaten Tricky Wind or maybe have the option to attach a 4th and then just do a random 240 out of nowhere. Of course, Manaphy will prevent that from hitting the bench, but overall, I don't think this is a bad card. Sorry for spending too much time on Zakat if you're not bothered about it, but I do think it's a, it's a pretty good card. Sigilyph has a mediocre first attack, which I think we're pretty used to with Sigilyph. It seems to be the new kind of Surfect, where they where it's kind of like a non-evolving basic that has a bunch of stats, but nothing really too impressive. 
Try Recharge lets you flip three coins, recharge, touch a basic energy card, and discard power to one of your benched Pokemon. Even if even if this did like a little bit of chip damage, like 20 or 30 damage, I'd still say this attack is mediocre at best, just because you're flipping coins. If it was attached to energy and it was for a Colos, I'd be a bit more excited because obviously more partners you can pair it with, but it's limited to Psychic Pokemon, it's on coin flips, it's very limiting. And then Psychic is just kind of a bad attack because it's just not doing enough damage, unfortunately. Not really doing it for Sigilyph, bit of a shame. Nose Pass, loving the artwork. Warm and Dam, oh, I guess Nose Pass is on here on its own because um, its evolution is Probe Passes with the Metal Types again, which is a bit sad for Nose Pass all alone. But anyway, moving on to Wormadan, we covered Madame's range earlier, but so I won't spend too long on this guy. But basically, the same kind of revenge attack, except this one is hitting weakness on Gengar, so and Jolteon actually. So that's pretty big. It just allows you to cover more weakness types. If you're playing the Zorog box, then you basically need Ooh, how many Pokemon would that be? I don't think it's quite 16. It's roughly about 12 or 14 Pokemon. I think, which is still quite a lot, actually, to get a 1-8 KO on a VMAX. Maybe that's asking too much. In the, um, I, st I still think the V-Star format with the Choice Belt is going to be really good, though, because, again, 2-8 KO has become a lot more easier with their lower HP. It doesn't make all the difference, so maybe Wormadan is, isn't that bad. Maybe, potentially. Riolu is not doing a whole lot. Lucario is here to be the next Charizard, although not as good, in my opinion. Roaring Resolve lets you put two damage counters on Lucario. Fine, whatever, you're dying anyway. If you do, search your deck for Fighting Energy and attach it to this Pokemon. So your second attack, Continuous Aura Sphere, you can read it as for a single energy. Like That's kind of where the ability comes in handy. You can read the second attack as for a single energy. So Aura Sphere does 10 damage, and then you discard all Fighting Energy. There's no choice. You have to discard all of it, and you do 60 more for each energy discarded. So... If you think about an example as to why this might be okay, is if, say you go first, you attach an energy to Riolu, you pass, next turn you evolve to Lucario, you manually attach one, then use Lucario's ability. So that's doing, like what, 190? So that's not awful. It's just the turns after that, you'll only be doing 130. Yeah, there's the choice spell. Admittedly, I'm coming back to choice spell again, so 130 becomes 160. 160 is obviously a lot better. 130 is already going V-Stars, so maybe V-Stars are just going to be too fragile. That's what I'm realizing from all this, but I don't think this is an awful attacker by any means. Maybe it, it does just go in the, the Zorok deck, though. It's another attacker. Allows you to cover the Fang-type weakness, but um, it's an interesting card. It's probably going to be like one of those fun rogue decks that's a good budget deck for beginners because it's pretty easy to play and it's good for combos, honestly. It teaches combos well. And there is like enough partners, you know, since you know the Barbaro we're about to look at. Um, you know, and Talion, obviously. You know, just stuff like that. And then maybe even its own Aurora deck with other fine type attackers, you know, could be cool. Throw. I can't, can never remember how to pronounce these guys. Throw, throw. Sork. I mean, both of them are really cool Pokemon. They're based around Karate and Kung Fu and all that, and they just give them the most lame stats ever. F in the chat for Thrawn and Sork. I think it's really a shame they did that. Golette is boring. Out of HP... Out of level ball HP range, which is also pretty brutal, so if you're going the level ball route, then don't play Golette. Golurk. Big Hands does 30 damage for a Twin Energy or a Double Turbo. And then 10 more for each card in your hand. We've seen these attacks before. We do have a Milotic that can prevent Marnies from being done to you. So there is, I guess, some little hope. There's Troy's Belt for an extra 30 damage. Of course, I have to mention that card. Yeah, it's not the worst. You, I would honestly rather just play something like the Lucario, though. Because at least that's kind of like guaranteed to damage all the time. This is very reliant on what you have in your hand. What you're able to draw. Maybe as a... A bit of a meme there is something fun can be had with this card but maybe even then um, the crowbat that lets you just draw cards when you evolve them up into golbat and crowbat you know something fun to be had with there but either way nothing too special grimer poisonous gas is doing nout muck is cool to a point but unfortunately just not good enough it has an interesting ability slow to road that says if your opponent's active pokemon is poisoned its retreat cost is one colors more 
ideally in a perfect world, Leafeon could like implement this somehow, and then maybe you could run away to poison your opponent, but then it becomes an issue of how do you do that? Because I mean, how do you pose poison your opponent in, against in Leafeon? You know, there's no lasers around like the good old days of well, good old days of item lock and lasers. It's horrible, really. But um, yeah, Sludge Road sadly not really doing enough. Sneasel is a oh, nice artwork, but again, extremely bland attacks, actually. Weavile picking up the pace a bit. We're actually getting a little bit better here. Scratch and Shovel, flip two coins. If, if you've got at least one heads, your opponent reveals their hands for each heads. Put a card from a hand at the bottom of their deck. If you put two cards at the bottom of your deck, you choose the order. Okay, so this is quite wordy. But say you get one heads, the opponent reveals the hand no matter what, and you get to put a card from their hand in the bottom of their deck. If you flipped two heads, your opponent reveals the hand, you choose two cards, and you choose the order they go in the bottom of their opponent's deck. Interesting disruption, lovable search. Could be interesting. I think there's just better options like Seeking and the Float Soul, but could be interesting like a control build. I've said interesting far too many times this video, but... um. Yeah, I guess that's a drinking game. How many times did Ember Power say interesting? Launch Core V. Oncho Stash. This Pokemon can have up to four Pokemon tool cards attached to it. If his ability stops working, discard tools from his Pokemon until there is one tool attached. Um, I think this kind of deck will always be bad as long as stuff like Zashin exists because obviously they can just boss KO Honchkrow and then all of a sudden you do no damage because you would obviously not want to play Honchkrow by itself. You'd want to play with um, the Patrisu. Or the, um, uh, what you call it? Whimsicott. I think Whimsicott's actually a better alternative because Whimsicott has a higher base damage. It does 10 base and then 40 more for each two card you discard. I know I said it had more base damage, but yeah, it, it can basically cap out at 250 and then obviously a lot more if you have more than two, two card, two more, well, more than one two card actually attached to Launch Gravies. Yeah, you have to find your tool cards, but there's ways of doing that. We have an Octillery reprint coming up very soon. There's um, Ultra Ball coming out, so you'll be able to dig further. I think this will be a cool meme deck. Whimsicott, Honchkrow, or Patrice Honchkrow. Maybe in a very funny world, you play it with Lightning and Dark Energy, and then you like slap 3 XP shells on Honchkrow and attach all the Lightning and Dark Energy from Patrice to Honchkrow. Could be funny. But um, yeah. There's a way that this is a fun deck. At least it's not complete bulk. Put it that way. This is not bulk. Spirit Tomb says, Tickling Terror, or Ticking Terror, sorry. Until the end of your next turn, the defending Pokemon is Weakness Dark. Oh, they did my boy dirty. Curse Drop. Put two damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. This is unfortunately terrible. Um, yes, you could argue there's great synergy with this and dark type attackers that do 160 so you can naturally just want to kill anything but it's just a bad card because you're probably going to switch or evolve bit of a shame considering how cool some spirit tombs have been in the past but i guess i can't have all home runs Wormadam, yeah bit of a deja vu situation here but this is a this is indeed the third Wormadam in this set so again with the madam's revenge this time being metal type you're only covering the Ice Rider weakness, and unless that starts popping up more, this card is not very good. Although, having said that, Luminion V opens the door to be able to find Melanie, so I'm just saying, could be a way for it to become more consistent. For this, sorry, to, for Ice Rider to become more consistent, so you more consistently hit that matchup and do more weakness damage. Maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Proba Pass, Magnetic Tension isn't good at all. Stop printing bad Proba Pass cards, especially when they're going to give them like cool artwork like that. that that's like really endearing artwork and then awful card. It's probably like bottom three cards in the set, to be honest. Heatran, Guard Claw does 30 damage, and then during your opponent's next turn, this attack does third. This Pokemon takes three less. It's really bad. Iron Hammer does 80, and then if, if this Pokemon has any Fire Energy, this attack does 80 more. Um, I need to see if the Fire Basin card is exclusively to Fire Pokemon. If it is exclusively only to Fire Pokemon, then this isn't very good. Because even if you just manual the Fire and then Bronze on the other energy, you have to find ways of getting the energy into play all the time. 
And at that point, why aren't you just playing Zacian? Why are you not just playing Corviknight? You know, even Corviknight, I think at that point would be better than this. And yeah, it's the 160. I talked about it, that number a lot this video, about it being pretty good, but I don't think it's particularly great. Clink is... And why am I pondering over Clink? It's just a bad card. It's cute, but bad. Clang has got some interesting artwork going on, but again, terrible. Clang is continuing the trend of being a really bad stage one. We've seen a lot of those as sets. Cling Clang. See, this is the, the final form. This is the one we're going to get excited for. Is Gear Wall ability. Your basic Pokemon take 20 less damage from attacks. Yeah, this isn't very good. If this was minus 30, then maybe it could be fine because. I, I guess I can't think of anything to be honest. I mean, it's just a really bad card overall. Tumbling attack does ninety damage. Flip a coin of heads does ninety more. So there's a random chance that for three energy on a stage two, you might two hit KO something. Yeah, this is a uh, this is one of those sad situations. It's a shame because again, I like the artwork, but a bit of a shame. Flygon V is for the the true believers in the meme. Sand Spray, we don't really care about Sand Spray. It's Dragon Impulse we're here for. 160, if your opponent's active Pokemon is at VMAX, it does 160 more, and then discard 3 energy from its Pokemon. So despite all the boring cards this set has introduced, there's also a lot of really cool ones. This is actually one of the more cool ones, in my opinion. 320 is a lot of damage, right? 320 is just a lot of damage. It's a 1 and kill on all of these stars, most of the VMAX. Even just a Zigzagoon ping will take you into most range, and then if you really want to get a turn to us, there's always Choice Belt. And then you have to discard 3 energy, which is really painful. I don't know how much I like this card. Part of me wants to say that Arcus V-Star is the perfect partner. You know, you just do 200, and then you can search your deck for 3 energy, attach them to this guy. If they just boss it and knock it out, then that was for nothing, but I guess at least you can attack with Arcus V-Star again, knock them out in return. Maybe that's how you play it, though. Maybe this is the way. Maybe Cryogonal in a funny meme. Cryogonal. Or um, Cryogonal in Turbo Patch. Or Arcus V-Star, I think. Arcus V-Star or Flygon V. That's probably where you're going to have to go with this card. Either that or um, ends, ends Resolve and Expanded. And stuff like Trice Band and Muscle Band. Could be funny. Or um, ADP, actually. I forgot about ADP. Gibble. Gabite. I'm loving the artwork on these guys. Maybe not so much goodbye, but definitely Gibble. So cute. Awful, awful cards. Garchomp is meh. I think this card's really annoyed a lot of people because Garchomp's traditionally been a very cool Pokemon card in the past. You know, Garchomp EX, from what I remember, was actually okay. And then both of the regular rare Garchomps were decent. Ability sound slip. One plays Pokemon hand will evolve one of your Pokemon during a turn. You may prevent all damage. It's just not very good, unfortunately. Your opponent can just boss around, play an escape route or something. Maybe there is some terms where this saves you a guard chomp, but it's pretty it's pretty naff, basically. Dragon Blade, 160, mill two. Two different energy cards. Yeah, this isn't very good. It's a shame, but um, yeah, it's not very good. For fetched, Leak Slash does twenty Leak Lash rather does twenty damage for a double colorist or a twin, a twin or a double turbo rather, and then ten more for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon, and then amazing artwork. Um, I quite like this card. You're not hitting anything for weakness, but it is that kind of revenge move where as long as you can at least do a respectable amount of damage last turn, you can respond with a finisher this turn with Leak Slash. Maybe you play this in Mad Party or the Zorak Warmadown deck we've been talking about. Um, so like you hit them for what 150, 160 and then you come in here and then hit them again for like 150, 160 they die and then they have to knock out far fetched or boss up your next attacker. Doesn't seem that bad. Pretty fun rogue tech. Rogue tech. Sorry not a rogue deck but Fun rogue tech to add some stuff. You could also pair this up with Sharam actually and put use Sharam to attach grass energies. I forgot about Totara actually being able to use Sharam, that's true. Cast form, double draw, draw two cards. Hurricane moving energy around, never good. Starly, bad. Starvia, bad. Staraptor, bad. Interesting control move. But 
that was back when Pidgeotto was really good as well, so I don't think this is particularly great. Bidoof is adorable, but um, just kind of bad. Barbaro, though, Barbaro's really good. Efficient Front Teeth, hopefully that's the real name of the attack. Once during a turn, you may draw cards until you have five in your hand. It doesn't take a genius to work out that this is a reprint of Octillery. If you weren't around for Octillery, then sorry. Um, Octillery was a great card, by the way. Just allowing you to draw until you have five in your hand. It's just great consistency. Um, you're not in level ball range, which is a bit of an oof. But um, I, I still think this is a great ability. Uh, I do think this is generally one of those abilities that we'll see a ton of play. One prize Pokemon, especially who don't want to discard stuff, with since you know, will definitely think of this as a good as a as a good option. It's definitely going to replace Encino in Malamar, so Malamar will live on post rotation, which is cool to know. And then maybe even a V Max deck that just wants to have an extra way of drawing cards that is an Intellion may prefer this. So, yeah, really good card overall. Arceus V has. A Trinity Charge attack, which isn't actually even that bad. I think I underestimated Arcus V in my initial review. Search your deck for up to three basic energy and attach him to your Pokemon V in any way you like. So power up him or power up something on the bench. It's actually not that bad for a basic evolving V. Arcus V Star with the Trinity Nova doing 200 and then searching deck for three energy. I think this is really strong. I think this will be like one of the highlights of the set, if not the highlight. The Star Birth ability is also insane. It basically guarantees Trinity Nova turn 2 no matter what. Because as long as you can find V-Star turn 2, you can just use Star Birth, Sigi deck for up to 2 cards. So you just need the... You can just get the Twin. And then if you really want to... Like, the, the Choice Belt... Like, I've been saying this whole video, but the Choice Belt really does make a lot of difference. So 30 damage really goes a long way. Because if you think about this, you went first... You attach the basic energy or a double turbo, for example, to Arcus V-Star or the V. You evolve to the V-Star next turn. You attach a Troy spell or you search for it using Star Birth and you get another energy. Trinity Nova does 230, so you'll be knocking out all the evolving Vs and stuff. So, really good card. Mincino, it's just a better Mincino than the one we have, which is good to know. Sincino is unfortunately not doing anything. Bit of a shame, but rip. Tornadus has the Sudden Cyclone ability, which is just kind of bad. Just play Escape Rope if you want this kind of effect, and it's also not surgeable with level balls, so... Yeah, pretty bad. Fresh Water Set. Heal 20 damage from each of your Pokémon is... underwhelming, I think. I think it's just bad in this kind of format. I don't think there's anything else to say. I think Moo Moo Cheese is unironically a better card. Ultra Ball. Yep, for Arvin, an awful lot of decks. I think Ultra Ball will definitely change the game, probably for the better as well, because it focuses on more of a consistent way of finding Pokemon. It is in the same format as Quick Ball, Great Ball, Level Ball, Evolution Incense. Yeah, a lot of ways. It also has great synergy with um, the Buy Barrel that we looked at earlier that lets you draw until you have five in your hand. It'll obviously have synergy with cards like Empoleon that let you discard stuff, and then all those other stage twos that want to be in the discard pile and all the rest of it. Definitely for um single strike and rapid strike mustard combos, that's another really big one that people have been talking about. So you you know you ultra ball away the, the rapid strike or single strike Pokemon. You ultra ball for Limonian, maybe, and then Limonian V use the Wonder Attack ability to search your deck for a single strike mustard or rapid strike mustard, and then play the Pokemon, draw a bunch of cards. All these kind of combos you can pull off with Ultra Ball. They'll be really good. Will it be a replacement? I mean, probably. It's just that good of a card. It's seen play before. It will definitely see play again. Choice Belt does what we've been saying Choice Belt's been doing the whole video, which is a, an amazing card. That lets you do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon V. Doesn't take a genius. I could stay here all day and list all the reasons why this is a really good card. It's just honestly one of the best cards in the set, in my opinion. Like, probably top three. Up there with Ultra Ball and Orcus V-Star. But uh, definitely, definitely one of the best. Pot Helmet is on the trash spectrum, unfortunately. It says this Pokemon card, this, this card is attached to, doesn't have a real box, so it has to be a single price Pokemon. It takes 30 less damage from attacks. There is never a world where you wouldn't just play Choice Belt or um, even just Air Balloon. Honestly, Air Balloon is just miles better. Maybe, maybe in a control deck, wherever the minus 30 is relevant, but I'd rather just play Air Balloons to switch around. And yeah, that's it. K 
Kindler is okay from what I remember. So discard a Fire Energy card from your hand. Look at the top seven cards of your deck and put two of them in your hand and shuffle the other ones back in. I quite like the fact you're shuffling in resources. You're not discarding stuff from the top of your deck. That's pretty good to see. You get to choose two. I'm aware this is actually one of the few ways that we can dig quite deep for special energy. Yeah, we have by Barrel and Mincino, but um, it could be a an alternative, I guess, for searching for special energy. Though you do have to score fire energy, so you have to play both if you're doing that. Cynthia's Ambition, draw cards until you have five in your hand, and if any Pokemon are knocked out, draw until you have eight. Wow. Hmm. That sounds like a good partner for Malamar, because you're a 120 HP Pokemon, they knock out your Malamar, you draw until you have eight, you maybe send sooner once or twice, you suddenly have a hand size of, well, 12 cards maybe, <laughs> and then you just blow them up. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this card. Maybe not great in everything, but not terrible, actually. Not, not terrible. Charon's Care is going to um, it's going to make Togekiss the most annoying deck in Standard. Definite synergy with Arcus V-Star as well, but basically says, but one of your colors Pokemon has any damage counters on it, and all cards attached to it into your hand. Yeah, this is um sort of a, a Cheryl slash Ace Roller kind of card, but for Arceus and Togekiss, a little bit better in my opinion, because you can just save the energy, you're not discarding anything, which is really good. Will it make Togekiss competitive? Maybe not, but pretty good. Press research for Rowan is what I want to see. Love that guy. Rosina's backup is a very unique card. I'm kind of losing my voice right now, but um, Rosina's backup. Choose one or more. I originally read this card as choose one, and I thought it was pretty bad, but it's one or more. So you can do all of this at the same time if you really wanted to. Does that make it good? Probably in some decks where this is important, that could be really good. I'm not sure. You have to let me know what you think down below. I'm, I'm generally not sure about this. Boss's Order. Is Boss's Order. Not sure why I'm thinking about that card. Again, I love the artwork. I love the Starry Night and the Moon, which is slightly out of proportion, but uh, is what it is. Flap Stadium. Eh, interesting. It is an interesting sort of thing for Control, but Control likes to get a big bench, so I'm not sure if you really would want that. And then Magma Basin, the stadium... Oh, wait, it's, it's appeared. I was about to make a comment about it not appearing, but it is. It's here. So this is... um Actually, this probably pushes cho choice, um, choice Belt out of top three cards in the set because Magma Basin is that good. Once during each post turn, the Premier attached Fire Energy is compiled from the Bench Fire Pokemon and put two damage counters. Obviously, good Charizard Synergy. Obviously, just a great stadium for Fire-type decks. And then Double Turbo... Coming in there with the, the double twin reprint for any V Pokemon, but you do 20 less damage, so that's important to know. That'll be it for my review. Very long review. Um, probably one of the longest videos I've ever recorded, but um, let me know what you think down below. I'd love to hear from you guys, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.